You know, it's almost like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. So when it comes to these multi emulator devices, it's sometimes a hit or miss. We have different kind of colors, the green, the red, and then we're having the black. And another configuration that we also have the option for your controller. That's kind of cool because you can actually use this thing most of the time also like in game system. But that's what we're going to find out. Unfortunate, I did get myself a message from the seller that he couldn't deliver me any controllers. There was a problem with the stock. Doesn't matter, I just wanted to deep dive into the device what we're actually just having. Because it's always the question how the overall quality is. So first of all, it does have a very nice way to it. But there were a couple of things that I found a little bit of bummer. First of all, there is no D-pad. The size is slightly bigger than your typical 3.5 inch display what we're having with most of these devices. It comes with an analog stick and six button configuration. The six button configuration is something we don't see very often. So where the joystick isn't the same like the Nintendo Switch, it doesn't have a click underneath, it's just an analog stick. The buttons are also quite disappointing simply because they have a very long travel. The distance are quite strange in my opinion, but also when it comes to the overall form factor, it's not like super pleasant to actually play. And that is when I find a little bit of bummer of this device. Next up, we're going to have the menu, select and start over here. And at the right, we're going to get ourselves a tiny speaker. At the bottom, we're finding two USB ports, the Type-C for connecting and charging the device itself. And of course, USB can be used for charging your phone. The left, we're going to get volume control by a basic scrolling wheel. At the top, we're going to get a on off switch. Then we're going to get an AV out and an old school USB. Yeah, and really old school. And I think this was actually used for the controller. And in here, we're going to find ourselves an SD card. Let's turn it off, by the way. Otherwise, we're going to get the SD card damaged but it's only in 32 gigabyte and i can tell you they are non-branded so it's highly possible that they can get corrupted so the display let's talk about it and let's turn this thing on so first of all it comes with an okay bezel it's not very thick and what i find very cool that they added the gamebox x5 here at the bottom and not on the let's say bezel around it so the menu yeah this is actually what we have seen many times before and what do i mean with this so first of all, you got go and get yourself an overall basic menu with a small delay. We're having pictures, music, and yep, it's just a multimedia player. That's one of the extra features and the menu, oh man, I really hate this, simply because it's very clunky and it doesn't react that fast. We have pictures, then we can watch videos if you want to. Let's see if there is a sample on here, directory list. And it seems to be we're having a couple of different files on here. Let's choose the video AVE. The things I really hate about this is that we need to mess around with the freaking menu. Oh, okay, now it, it still works, but I can't get out of the freaking menu. There we go. Ah, oh, the sluggish freaking annoying menu, but the next thing that we need to do is going to the TV out. Yep, and we need to set it to the region of the television that we want to use, and then it's going to be powering on. <clears throat> The overall image quality, it's okay. The idea for this typical as a TV out, then the controller I didn't get, you can just play your games like in game console. And I say the overall quality is not the best. I think if you're going to plug this AV out thing in on a CRT, it was going to be looking way better. But there was another thing I didn't mention before. If you're going to play a game like at zero, and normally you're having the L and R buttons or shoulder buttons, yeah, we do have them, but they have been placed at the front, so playing this is kind of awkward in my opinion. I'm not going to say it's possible, but you can see I can actually play the game like this. But this is a little bit of so my opinion when it comes to shoulder button games. If you really need to have the shoulder buttons all the time, that makes these things or uh, these games absolutely unfreaking playable. And the game list, it's the same that we have seen many times before. Super Nintendo. Mega Drive, NES, MAME, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. And yeah, they're giving a Super NES controller with the CPS or MAME. Famicom, Game Boy. It actually has a Game Boy Advance logo. SMC and SMD. So this is what we're going to get when it comes to the overall support. There is no of adding new emulators. This thing is completely locked. And oh man, this thing, I cannot say it anymore and enough. It's so freaking slow. The display is bigger than the previous video or handheld reviews, but unfortunate, the display underneath is pretty damn bad. And also when it comes to the plastic at front, it's a very thin material. We have seen it before with the just regular X6 device, and this is not great at all. 
Every single time you're booting up a game, you have the first menu where you can restart or actually start a game. It's kind of funny, you're still having this weird thing going on. You then load, if you have made a quick save, we have the settings. But settings with an output, and that's kind of pointless because you can shut down the output. I don't know what's even the point of that. Then having the keyboard mapping, if you have any problems with the emulator, you can change it out here. Screen size, having the full screen, we can scale it, and original size. But we're going to do a quick in-depth about that. And here having the information, it just says version R102. Makes no sense whatsoever. There's no information regarding the emulator whatsoever. But let's take a close look at the express ratios, what you can actually do with that. Because it's quite interesting. So this is the original or the full screen option. So if you're pressing the menu button, here we're having the same menu, only now we can make a quick save. Next up, if you're going to make a quick save, you can archive it over here. But there's no screen picture or whatsoever, we have different devices. So we don't know actually where we were when it comes to the save files. But let's get into the screen size, having the original. Let's go all the way back, return to game. This is the original and it looks absolutely horrible. And then next up, what we're going to get is the scale. And it will basically like scale it all the way back and having black bars at the left and at the right side. So let's go back over here, return. And this is actually how it looks in combination with not even black bars, but white bars. So it's absolutely horrible and I hate this settings. Oh man. Let's load it up, so you can all see that actually works. Here we go. But let's put it back to an original size. Take consideration, if you're going to put it on original size, every emulator will basically put to this certain, like say, selection. The menu is very, very slow, by the way. But let's get into some gaming and how the overall emulation is. Oh crap, I chose the wrong one. No, no, no. I have a brain fart. I got a brain fart. Sorry. There we go. Much better. But let's start off with some Super Nintendo. And I can tell you it sounds absolutely horrible. It's not the way how you want to play this. And this is something that I've seen many times before when it comes to the X series handhelds like the X6, X9, you know, whatsoever. There were many different versions running on the same kind of software and they didn't fix it at all. In my opinion, a little bit of a bummer. It's still playable to a certain point in my opinion, but it's not running on the full FPS. And I wish they are finally going to fixing it because they are using this piece of software on many different devices. Next up, let's try some Sega Genesis, and I must say that the overall emulation performance of this system is not bad at all. So we do get some decent overall experience here. And we have seen this problem with the previous handhelds that we've checked out here on the channel. I'm roller skating and just roadhouse kicking everybody. Roadhouse. Let's move on to the NES part. And when it comes to the performance here, also do we'll go to some good emulation. So one of the things I do find very pleasant is that we're having this joystick that responds very well. And for just games like this, it is absolutely amazing. In combination with the great overall performance when it comes to some GBA, we can just old school enjoy some games. I have no idea what buttons are mapped to what, but... Oh, I think what the problem is, I need an apple. But the Game Boy Color looks really stretched out. So let's get into the menu. Take consideration if you're going to change out the screen size or aspect ratio. Unfortunate it is that it will be changed for every single freaking emulator. I hate that they're doing this, but okay. I don't know if this is going to be looking better because I really hate those freaking white bars at the left and right. But the resolution is so much better. It's a great test to check out how accurate this freaking joystick is and how Tetris be, can be played. I can tell you that this thing is very sensitive, so you need to be very careful. 
how to move around with the blocks and how you're going to be navigating. And you can see like I need to be just like touching the joystick and getting some movement. So if you're like a pro in Tetris, it's even possible you need to have a little bit of a learning curve over here to of the freaking annoying controls. Next up, let's try some Neo Geo with Art of Fighting 3. And the reason why it's a great test bench, simply because it's a very nice game to play, but also when it comes to some emulators and cheap devices, it doesn't run that great. I already hear a couple of like stutters in the beginning, but so far so good. Well, I've been complaining a lot of these freaking uh, cheap D-pads back in the day. I'm very glad that they made the decision to put a decent analog stick in it, because this place so much better but when it comes to let's say the sidebars this is due of the scaling that I implemented I find a little bit of a bummer in my opinion simply because when you're looking at it it's absolutely ugly I really don't understand why they went for the black but doesn't matter let's choose full screen again and let's go all the way back return to the game oh man this looks so much better now but one of but I'm really looking forward to opening this thing up simply because I just wanted to check out what kind of battery is in here. And yep, there is one huge battery. But the thing is, is it actually the battery that they're saying it is? So first of all, I can tell you already there is no information. I know it's very difficult to show you here on the camera, but I have noticed there is no information on the battery. And that is the thing they're doing a lot nowadays. Back in the day, you have some, let's say, uh, specifications, but, and also a serial number if you need to replace it. But the downside to replacing this thing, yeah, here you can just actually see that they solder this onto the main board. So if you need to replace it, you need to do some soldering. Otherwise, yeah, you cannot like replace it. 32 gigabyte of a non-branded SD card, the same shenanigans that we have seen many times before, one huge PCB, but yeah, this is actually the thing that we're having in the inside. It's just a cheap device. But what I find quite interesting to see how they assemble this to the handheld, where we're having normally like double-sided tape, now they have these huge double-sided tape blocks that just leave this battery like floating around. You can buy yourself a power bank and 10,000 or something like that for not a lot of money. What you can just do is buy yourself a device that can actually play games and charge your phone. So the idea is kind of wicked to be honest and uh, there is a market for this because they keep making these things. Let me know if you ever bought something or using this. I really wonder. So first of all, if you're going to plug it in, it will give you an indication how full the battery is or the battery in the inside I've shown you over here and it will charge your phone and you can actually play some games. So how long you will, you're able to play, it's debatable in my opinion, depending on like say the charge and everything else. But still normally you can play a couple of hours on normal, let's say 2000, 3000 milliamp battery when it comes to the device itself. And now you're going to be sharing it with your phone. It's a kind of interesting thing. Let me know what do you think of this device. Would you consider picking it up? It's a new market out there, I'm guessing, because they keep releasing new ones and new ones. But the overall performance of the device, I'm just, I'm just going to be honest. I am not really pleased about it, simply because you see all of the errors and problems like with the previous X-Series handhelds. Thank you all for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell. It would be great to see you in the next video.